Hey there, so as I promised, we're going to do a quick video on how you can create Excel files using Python. So let's just talk about what we're going to do here for just a minute. So why do we need to do this? Well, often you're working in a business environment or other environment where most people are familiar with Excel. So this is just a great way to easily create these directly. And Excel makes it easy to do calculations and charts. Now, there's lots of great libraries to do that as well in Python. So you probably wouldn't be doing this if you just were um, dealing with the data yourself. But more likely because you wanted to put it in a form that other people could understand without having to run your program, for example. There's two formats, uh, XLS 2007 and before and XLSX, which is the current. We are going to be using the current format. And what, the first question is why don't you why don't just use why don't we just use a CSV file or a character separated uh, value file? Um, some people call that comma separated. Essentially, it's a value comma value comma value uh, for each row, and you can actually import that into Excel. And but it is a step that you have to do. You can open it. You can open a CSV file directly. Um, it's an okay option, but it's and and if you're just needing to just show the data without any formatting or anything like that, then yeah, by all means, you might choose to do a CSV. So, um, but this this video is specifically targeted for those of you who need to write directly to Excel files. So the option that we're gonna we're gonna pursue is XLSX Writer, which is actively supported. It's a great library. I've done a lot of uh, work with exporting data to Excel, and this is one of the better libraries that I've ever used. So let's get right into it. So um, just cancel that. Let's go over here to the code. So instead of just having a straight hello program to start with, I started with a program that generated some random data. And I did this just so that we have some data to work with. So basically what we've got here is um, we have a tree ID, the number of apples the tree produced, the height of the tree, the age of the tree. Actually, I changed that not from height to be the profit of the tree. So let's change that. Uh, the age of the tree and the type of the tree. All this loop is going to do is go through and randomly generate some data. So. Uh, the tree ID will always be whatever the row is, um, with 1,000 added to it. The number of apples will be a random number between 50 and 100, with 20 added to it. The type of tree, the type of tree will be random choice on one of these out of this list. The tree profit will simply be a random number times uh, between 0 and 1 times 1,000. The height of the tree will be 100 plus uh, a random integer from 25 to 50. And then we'll print it out. So let's just run this as it is. And so what you see down here in our output window is our data. Now every time I run this it's going to generate different data. So that's okay. This is just a test. I just needed to have some data out there. Um, we can control how many rows uh, we're going to generate by simply uh, changing the range here. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So the very first thing we need to do is import um, XLS Writer, XLS X Writer, I should say. And so we've got that already uh, configured and ready to go. Um, and the very first thing we're going to do is create a workbook. Now, I'm going to be st uh, pausing the video as I kind of type some repetitive stuff and then talking about the code rather than making you watch me sit here and, and type it all. Um, so we'll start with just a workbook. And workbook, and then we give it a name. And I'm going to call this apples xlsx. And then when we're done with our loop, we it's this is important because if you don't do this, your file may not get written out. So we are going to say workbook 
uh, close. So the Excel file itself is considered is called a workbook. And so what this is going to do is create a new workbook, and then this will close it. Now I haven't written anything into the workbook yet, but let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens. So we'll run this. So it generated this, um, because I put it in the same path as the current folder, it just dropped it in here. If I open this up in Excel to, by double-clicking it in PyCharm, there's nothing in the spreadsheet yet. Okay, and so we'll, we'll do this several times and you'll get to see how we um, tackle that. So the very first thing I'm going to do is simply write out, uh, the, well, the first thing I'm going to do is add a new sheet. So you, you probably noticed that the, that the workbook already had a sheet in it, and that's because Excel does that automatically. If um, So what I need is I need a worksheet. So a workbook is made up of sheets. Um, and so um, worksheet is equal to workbook. Uh, add worksheet. Okay, and we could give it a name. Um, for example, we could say apples. So let's run this, and I'm going to be doing this over and over again, just running it and showing you what the spreadsheet looks like so that you can, can see what's going on. So here's our sheet. You'll notice it's titled apples down there at the bottom. So that worked great. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the column headings in. And I'm going to show you how to do the first one, and then I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and add the other columns so that you don't have to sit here and watch me type all of these. So what you do to add a cell value is simply say worksheet.write. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm just going to use the actual um, co um, column row designator. So this... This row in Excel is known as A1. This one's B1, C1, D1, E1. So I'm just going to put my headers in right there is what I'm going to do. So I will pause the video while I do that. Okay, so I've got the code added. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. And if we open it up, you notice we now have our column headings. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and put our data, output our data. So we're going to keep track of a row index because we need to keep track of which row we want to write to. You'll notice all of these went on row 1. Um, Excel is not index origin 0. It doesn't start counting at 0. It starts counting at 1. And so I need to start my next row at two, row 2. And so I'm just going to make up a, a set of variable called row index and just set it equal to 2. And then each time we have completely written, um, generated a row and written it to the spreadsheet, we'll just do row index plus equals 1, which will increment that variable. And then what we can do is do something very similar to what we did here. So I can just copy and paste this code down here. The difference is I will want to put the row index here, and I will want to put the value here. So again, I'll pause the video while I add that code. Okay, so we've added our code, and all I'm doing is simply concatenating on to the column and then uh, using the, the row, the current row index that I'm at. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what we've got. open up our spreadsheet. Okay, great. So we have got um, all of our trees in here. There's 200 of them. And um, we have the number of apples that it produced, the tree height, the tree profit, the tree type. Now, you'll notice some problems here right off the bat. First is formatting issues. So um, this would be a great time to say, well, I could just dump this to a CSV, but the advantage of Excel is that we can do some formatting. So the first thing I'm going to do is format this row so it's bold, and then I'm also going to uh, do some other formatting, but let's start with that. And the way we do that 
is we um, set up a cell format. And so right here, and this actually can happen right after the workbook. So let me um, let me grab this and let's set up a cell format. And this is pretty easy to do. And this is just a variable name. So cell format is going to be equal to workbook add format. So that tells um, the the library that we want to um, be working with a format. So we have the format here and then we can just set the different attributes. Again this is a great library. It's got a lot of flexibility so what I'm going to do is set text wrap. So I'm going to tell it the, to wrap text and then I'm going to set the alignment to top and left. So we'll do that and then real quickly we'll just add left as well. So you can just keep adding different um, format attributes. And then what we want to do then is apply that and We're going to apply that to all of our cells, but what we want to do is also create a bold format for our top row. And uh, again, workbook, add format, and this time we will do this a little bit differently. We'll simply put the format in here. So I'm just showing you the different ways that you could do this. It's very flexible again. And we'll just say we want it to be true and then when we add these down here when we write these cell values we can just simply say which format we want to use and so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this and we'll take a quick look at this and there's our formatting so let's run this and open up our spreadsheet we should now have the top row bold which we do, which is great. We still haven't addressed the fact that we have values that go beyond the column. We'd like it to look more like this. So let's tackle some of that next. The other formats I'm going to be working with here is a money format. So what I want to do here is just say money format. Now as you know Excel has a lot of different formatting capabilities. Conditional formatting, colors, fonts, font sizes. So the library lets you do pretty much all of that. So let's, we're going to do a money format. So num format. And that is going to be look like this dollar sign and we're going to do comma we'll have comma separators if you don't use commas where your locale currently is then you can set that appropriately so this is a this is money format and then I'm going to do something called money red format and I'll explain why we're going to do that here in just a minute so I'm just setting up I'm just again setting up some different formats and here I'll do money red format set font color to be red so we'll use that here in just a minute okay so let's go ahead and apply the normal cell formatting which is this one here to um, inside of our loop and so after the value we simply just put the cell format 
And this will take care of the wrapping issue that we've got going on, or the lack thereof, I should say. So let's run this. And look at our spreadsheet now. I haven't used the money format, and I haven't used the... Uh, I haven't tried to adjust width of anything, but you'll notice now what's happening is it's wrapping these values. And if I if I make the column wider, then it, they don't wrap. So we got the wrap applied, and also it aligned everything top left, which Excel does not do by default. Okay, and then what we're going to do then is apply the money format on this profit. So instead of sell, we're going to do money. And let's see. Did not have a space in that, or a underscore. Looked like that. I wasn't very consistent in my, my variable naming, so do better than that. Do better than I do. That's always a good idea to do. Okay, so now we have this now as a money format. So that's great. Okay. And we're going to do something like this. We're going to say if the tree profit, the tree profit is less than 100, then we're going to highlight in red. Else we'll have normal formatting. So this is the normal formatting. And so we're just going to add this little if statement in here just to show you that you can actually do this. And this is money red format. So if it's less than 100, we want it in red, we want the color to be red. That's what that's all about. Run this, take a look. Looking for values less than 100. Sure enough, they're all highlighted in red for us. So, again, very easy to add the formats. Very easy to manipulate those um, in logic the way we have here. And you could actually put logic in the Excel spreadsheet that would do that as well. But this is a way to have that all set up up front so that you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So the one thing that we still have that we're kind of hanging out on is the fact that we have these columns that aren't quite wide enough. And so the last thing I'm going to do is after everything's said and done here, we've put out all of our data. We're going to say worksheet.setColumn. And we're going to say 4. So it's... Um, it's column five in the spreadsheet, uh, but uh, the library is index origin zero, and we're going to set, set this width equal to 50. And you could do this for any columns. This is start column, end column, so we could do uh, zero through four, and that would assign all of them as a width of 50. Uh, what's 50? It's an arbitrary value from my perspective right now, but it is... Uh, you will see the result here. And now we have this nice wide column for our, and we probably don't need it to be that wide. 25 might be enough. So you can adjust that, play around with it a little bit. So there you go. A quick way to get your data into Excel and to do formatting on it and to create that native Excel file that you can then take this apples.xlsx file and send it out to those people in your business or your organization who really like to and their job depends on being able to be really good at Excel. So anyway, I hope this has been useful to you and I hope that um, you um, are able to successfully create Excel files. Please subscribe, like uh, the video that keeps these coming and uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.